Well, hey all, and welcome back. And today is a special, I guess, Merry Christmas review of Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy, Netflix, Walmart exclusive, Autobot Bumblebee, and Jesus Christ is that a mouthful. Anyway, here's the new box. And I won't be surprised if we don't see this again from another box because we've seen so many figures re-released. However, currently this is the only way to get it. And as of now, December 22nd-ish, I don't even know anymore because who knows how time works. This is on shelves in a lot of Walmarts, at least in the United States. You might have to get through other alternate routes in different countries. So let's quickly look at the box. They have a new design for the packaging, which is still the same shape box. Nice illustration, though the box is all white. One thing about the back, I'd like to notice two things. One, I guess we're done with bios. It seems like that's sort of gone away lately, which I don't necessarily mind because sometimes they don't sync up with the show. For whatever reason, that's gone. Nice image on the back with, I guess, Cliff Jumper's gun. The other thing that I think is the most important thing on this box is this, which is the same thing that is on the Masterpiece box. They got the licensing for the VW Bug, and I think that is awesome as essentially what is the, the quintessential Bumblebee. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get this guy out of the box and see if he's worthy of our collection. And with him out of the box, let's go ahead and point out the first thing. He's tiny. And that's okay, because we were want to pay this much for Cliff Jumper, we are want to pay this much for Bumblebee, which to me is a more iconic character, and especially getting him as a VW bug. As of this time, even Walmart is charging 50 bucks online to get this figure versus the standard 19 whatever retail price, though this was on sale at the Walmart store for less than 18 when I got him. Anyway, the other short and sweet thing I will say is that if you like Cliff Jumper, you can save yourself some time because you're going to like him because he is essentially Cliff Jumper. He even comes with Cliff Jumper's gun, which to me, I don't think is essential. I would have rather seen a different blaster, but the fact that it can become two different pieces, I think it's fine as is for him and the other pieces can get stored away, though it does convert to the big cannon, which I will likely give to a weaponizer of some sort. Speaking of weaponizers, he does have the same gimmick with a weaponizer port here, here, on the feet, and kind of one on the back if you take off the backpack. And that is the one point of contention a lot of fans might have is the fact that he is kind of a parts former because of that backpack. But like I said, Cliff Jumper was the exact same way. And honestly, I love Cliff Jumper. I think they complement each other well. He actually has a little bit more mass because of the body shell design of the Volkswagen Bug, which I think helps him stand out as a figure. But we're looking at the same kind of articulation. We're looking at the same kind of connection points. We're looking at the same basic core figure with a different shell. And I actually think they could pull off a lot of bots this way for the mini bot line. But we can go ahead and turn around and see from the Mac. Yet again, they still look different enough to be justifiably a complete separate purchase. Sure, these Transformers are getting more expensive as time goes on, but I do think this is a great addition. But he has the same articulation. We have a ankle pivot, which I am so happy to see. We have rotation of the hip, we've got the knee, we've got rotation at the waist, and of course the shoulders, move out, swivel, all those great things that we've come to expect. Head, little bit of wiggle up and down. Actually turning it's pretty tight. Now one thing I will say, if you're to get this figure, hopefully the fact that we're seeing them roll out now is a sign they'll be pretty ample, as that he'll be pretty easy to get. But one thing I'll point out, before you grab one off the shelf, if you see several, go through them all because I saw a lot of inconsistencies in the paint jobs. Uh, one thing I'll notice or point out is that I saw that there was various different tonal values of the chest area here. I saw that there's different quality of painting on the windshield wipers. Some were just blobs. Some were painted thicker, thinner. I also noticed a little bit of inconsistency on the face painting as well. So make sure you go through the packages, look at the face of the box, and you'll be able to see which is better. Speaking of the face, one thing I really want to point out is that he is a little bit lacking in contrast in the face area. It is silver. He does have the eyes there, which I believe are a light blue, and then yellow. But because of everything being such a light color, it doesn't have a lot of contrast 
like when you compare him to Cliff Jumper. And he is a little bit softer featured as well, being Bumblebee. One other point I'd like to point out is a, is a minor flaw, and Cliff Jumper had as well, and you really can't fault it, especially if you put weapons in his hands, is that the hole for the hand is really quite large. Uh, and that, that is a little disappointing, though it's not so bad that it ruins the whole figure, but that is a minor, minor nitpick. And the other one being is that when I move around the arms, I do sometimes pop the shoulders out. Um, but if you can keep everything snapped in, it holds pretty well. But out of the package, every now and then, it will come loose and pop out. But for what I'm known for around here is I like to compare things. So let's go ahead and start comparing this with other Transformers. Now you've already seen Cliff Jumper. Let's go ahead and see how he looks next to the Generation 1 Bubble B. This is not the original G1. However, this is the Walmart exclusive G1 reissue that came out not too long ago. And the main difference being it has a different head sculpt, which is a little bit more reminiscent of the actual cartoon design. But you see how everything carries over. You have the same form with the feet, the same thin, small black legs, uh, the arms, of course, being different. But you see the face and the chest and all that being similar enough to where it really calls back to the original design. Uh, I think they've done a great job modernizing it and capturing it. I think it's good enough to really carry on the name Bumblebee. And here he is with the original War for Cybertron Bumblebee, which even within its own line was way out of scale. I actually only have this figure because it's a great transforming figure. Uh, bot mode stuff is just okay and vehicle mode is just okay, but the transformation of this vehicle is great engineering. That is why he resides in my collection. But you can see definitely no relationship to the Bumblebee as far as scale or anything like that. So, but I just want to show it to you guys as a quick comparison. And then we have Classics Bumblebee, which actually, as a robot mode, is a really solid, great figure. Of course, the engineering is a little bit more dated, and he is limited in a lot of his articulation. He has a lot of extra panels and interesting gimmicks. But the sculpt on this and the concept was actually really great for its time. And I think that this new one, while could be a maybe hair better as far as the facial contrast, they've done an excellent job updating design and making something that was worthy as a replacement of the classics Bumblebee. The other bot I want to compare this to was Masterpiece Bumblebee because that's actually what we kind of have going on here. A uh, lot of similarities, even in the color. Even though the color is not 100% the same, the tone of yellow is actually really similar. Of course, there's some different design cues because of do the transformation, and this does make a more perfect robot mode. They did do a great job of making a version that you don't feel bad playing with, that you can put with your regular collection, even though... It's not that much smaller than the Masterpiece version, which could fit in this line well if you were okay with him scaling above some of the other figures. The one thing that's definitely different, I won't be surprised if someone comes around and makes a new head for the Netflix Bumblebee where he has the mask of the original G1 toy mode. And lastly, for the robot comparisons, I want to show him next to the Earthrise Optimus Prime. And as you can see, he fits in perfect. He makes a great mini bot, and he definitely suits this line very well. I think he complements Prime, the quality of the plastic, as well as the details. I definitely think it makes a standout as part of this line, and definitely, I can definitely say it's going to be one of the most sought-over figures in this line. And here we have him transformed, and his transformation is pretty much identical to Cliff Jumper. The one thing I would like to point out, though, is Cliff Jumper feels more sturdy during transformation. There's something that feels a little bit fragile about transforming this and i'm not entirely sure what it is but the sides and the roof and all that something just feels a little bit more delicate i don't think it's going to break but it's just something that i could definitely feel between the two as i transformed them now they both have the same wonky gimmicks with the gun where his roof pops up and a gun can be attached and you can have thrusters and skates and all that and i think that's all goofy and if you like that it's fine you can look at the instructions and it shows you how to do that but I'm more interested in the bot mode and how well they do the vehicle mode. And they do the vehicle mode very well. We can go ahead and put him next to Cliff Jumper. And Cliff Jumper is sort of what looks to be a cross between a 944 Porsche and a Starion from Mitsubishi. I don't know if that's exactly what it is. Uh, I don't believe it's licensed like it is for the Volkswagen. But that's sort of what it resembles. And there's some things I would like to point out. I do, I do feel like the build quality like I was saying was fragile with Bumblebee, does feel a little bit better on the Cliff Jumper version. 
but it's a negligible difference. So it's nothing really to be overly concerned with. One thing that I do kind of have a slight grip about, and I guess it sort of goes to realism, is that I do feel the silver could have been a little bit better on the wheels. Uh, but I mean, it kind of goes along the lines of this being an old vehicle, a classic bug, and there could be some wear on it. And it would also kind of suffer from some of the classic car uh, manufacturing faults. So, I mean, it's, it's a minor nitpick, but it is a pretty good looking vehicle mode. Of course, you have all the panel and stuff that we've grown to expect from a transforming toy, but it's nothing major. But they do scale well together. They look good together. And let's go ahead and check him out with some of the other Bumblebees. Now, here he is with Classics. And this is where Classics really is separated from the new line with Earthrise and Siege and all that, is that they have perfected mass shift as far as making a far more compact vehicle mode where we have this chunky robot which the chunk is nice the heft is nice the plastic quality is far superior as far as just it feels like a strong toy you can't compress that much and so you end up with a big vehicle which means a whole line has to be big and that just does not work for the way things are now it was a good bumblebee it definitely was not a bug bumblebee which is what we've grown to love. And here he is with the original G1 design. And of course, that one was a goofy, miniaturized, super deformed penny racer where we have Bumblebee looking like a real bug. And just to show him with scale, here he is with Optimus Prime. And I think it works very well together. I think it is a fairly realistic looking scale to have them posed together. And I think it really completes the line. Bumblebee almost looks too realistic for this line, considering there are some really good alt modes in this, but there's still sort of this exaggeration, this looseness, because they're trying to make their own vehicles, where Bumblebee is so tied to a real car that it kind of makes him stand out from the line just a little bit, but I think he works very well regardless. And lastly, I want to put him with what I consider to be the best Bumblebee. Like I, I've said before, Masterpiece Bumblebee is probably the best figure as far as any Bumblebee comes. And that is this specifically MP21 Bumblebee. There's a new one that's come out that's more tune accurate. I'm not a fan personally. I think this is the best Bumblebee. And you can see this is a slightly shrunk down version of that. We've got placement of even how some of the things appear to transform. There, there's some similarities in it, but it is not identical. But you can see like where the panel lines are, for the feet, for this piece here, for the sides, for the back. I mean, th this is definitely where the influence was drawn. And it's not like MP Bumblebee was an expensive figure. He actually was easy to get pretty affordably uh, for whatever reason. It just didn't, either they mass produced them to the point where the price could come down or it wasn't as much in demand, but it was an affordable figure especially when you're seeing this one going for as much as it's going on a secondhand market already as soon as it's already come out. But my thoughts on this as far as vehicle mode goes, MP Bumblebee is perfect. He's excellent. But if you want one you don't feel bad playing with, that you don't feel bad transforming and messing with and posing, I do think this is a great option. While MP21 transformation is not overly complicated, you do have a little bit finessing to do and you do run risk of messing up paint and things on those lines as with all masterpiece figures these days but this figure here i mean if you're wanting a masterpiece type bumblebee to go in through classic collection this guy's it just like earthrise prime sort of borrowing a few ideas from masterpiece optimus prime so does this and you are definitely seeing the evolution of these figures starting to cross over into a plane where one might make the other one obsolete so in conclusion, what we have here is a very well-balanced figure that's very poseable, that has a VW alt mode, looks great, fits with the Earthrise line, and is essentially a deluxe take on the Masterpiece Bumblebee. In my opinion, I think it's a great figure. There's a few extra gimmicks here that I, you know, take them or leave them. It's nice to have the extra stuff to help justify the price but he is a figure worth picking up. He is currently a Walmart exclusive. Hopefully they produce enough of him so that no one has to go through scalpers and maybe we'll see other variations of this figure down the line. But he's poseable, he's great, I love him. And I hope this helps you decide if he's worthy of your collection. But like always, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you all next time.